We live in the most dangerous moment in American history for democracy. We're either going to be a nation that's of and by and for the people, or of and by and for large corporations and the wealthy. Join me in giving a strong round of applause to our keynote person. Listen to him, hear his words, and then go buy his book, and then let's all work together to push back on Citizens United. Well, thank, thank you, Bob, and uh, thank you for, uh, to Bus Boys and Poets and Teaching for Change uh, for bringing us all together here. Um, and that, that's what brings us together. Um, it's what the book is about. Uh, and it is why you know, two million plus Americans have now signed resolutions to call for a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United. It's why eight states now, Connecticut just joined um, yesterday or the day before, uh, a number of other states. We're now up to eight states where the legislators have uh, come together to call for a constitutional amendment, to call for Congress to send an amendment to the states that will overturn Citizens United and say corporations are not people, money is not speech, Bonifaz. It's why so many people t are coming together now as we face a crisis of democracy in our country. That there is that, that dream we've always had, um, all the way back to 1776, that, that, you know, this radical promise that all people are equal, that a free republic of equal people can actually govern ourselves in this world. It is rare. In human history, it's fragile, but that is what we have committed ourselves as Americans to do. Um, it's what we keep getting closer and closer to doing, and the only reason we get closer is because we overcome generation after generation deep contradictions about that, deep you know things that could kill it. In the in the forward in the book, Bill Moyers says uh, American democracy has been a close run thing, a series of almost miraculous escapes from what would have killed it. And we can talk about those from the Civil War to the last Gilded Age um, and many others. And, and so we've overcome all those things. And a key driver of, the, the, of overcoming those things, those challenges to that promise of America, has been the constitutional amendment process. I mean, people don't realize, don't let anybody tell you amendments don't happen, we can't do that, we don't do that, we do do that, and if we don't do that, we lose this promise, this, we lose the American uh, Republican democracy uh, that we all uh, are, are working so hard for. So we're going to get this done. What changed in six years? Did we amend the Constitution so we Americans are no longer allowed to keep corporate money out of elections? Of course not. What changed was Sandra Day O'Connor, exactly, the Supreme Court. Sandra Day O'Connor retired and Justice Rehnquist, Chief Justice Rehnquist, passed away, replaced by Chief Justice Roberts and Samuel Alito. Now think about that. The two justices who left were known for most of my you know, professional life as conservatives. Um, so who are these guys who replaced them that threw out their work and and threw out a century of law and did something that would have shocked the founders of our country to say the American people aren't allowed to preserve the equality of the vote, to preserve a fair, free election process where the, maybe the only time in, in, uh, you know, in American life or any life where we, we actually are all equal. We all get one of those ballots and you know, that, that is the, the promise of political equality. Uh, and, and what Citizens United does is say, we're not doing that anymore. We now have a marketplace. And just like you come to the market, you can you know, bring a wheelbarrow of money, you leave with a lot more stuff, you, and you show up with not much money, you don't get to shop at all. That's what it does. So the money issue of Citizens United is huge. And I just want to give a couple of illustrations. I, you know, I think we know there's way too much money in politics now, and there's nothing we can do about it because of Citizens United. But what I think we miss sometimes is the source of that money comes from so few people, so few sources, a number of corporations now, that uh, it, it, is, it is what changes just an obscene amount of money that can corrupt the system into actual plutocracy, control of the government and our politicians by the few at the expense of the many. So 
you know, we talk about the 1% sometimes, 99%, 1%. It's actually worse than that, that 0.5% account for more than 80% of the political spending in American life, the, the campaign contributions and the, and the, and the spending. And so 0.5% will count, account for 80% of the $6 billion that's expected to be spent in the 2012 election. If, in 2011, there were 196 donors. I mean, 196 is, you know, we probably have that many in this, in this building. Uh, 196 donors to super PACs uh, who gave $100,000 more and made up or more. So some of those, of course, like Sheldon Adelson are in the millions of dollars made up more than 80% of the super PAC money. So if you want to see government of the few, by the few, against government of the people, we got it. And Citizens United says there's nothing we can do about it. Um, you know, the other problem though, so there's the, the, the deep uh, corruption that happens, because that, believe me, that money is not a burst of civic enthusiasm you know, to, to fund elections because they want fair free elections. It is an investment in the same way a bribe is an investment. Uh, there is expected to be a return, I do in the book, is the corporate veto. I mean, we now have in this country a new constitutional phenomenon. We always had the presidential veto, that was intended. Um, so you have a balance of power, and you know, obviously if uh, you know, Congress does something, the president doesn't want it to become law, vetoes it, it can be overridden with two-thirds uh, passage of Congress. We now have a corporate veto. And, and let me say what I, I mean. I think we all can appreciate the veto that has happened in our lives because of the money in elections, how we don't have any serious discussion of the climate catastrophe unfolding right now um, around the world. We're not even debating solutions, let alone enacting solutions. That's a corporate veto because of the corruption of money in politics. Um, the, the, the range of debate about the health care reform, I'm glad we have health care reform, but you know, many, other countries would seriously debate, and most of those that did pass the single-payer approach, that was never anywhere near the table because of the realities of corporate control. Every month, a law goes down to the doctrine of corporate speech that underlies Citizens United. This notion that corporations are speakers or voices, those are metaphors for people. And and you know, we, we, we are missing a, a wipeout of public interest laws, of the public interest, if a corporation can figure out a way to say their spending plan, their business plan is speech. Let me give you just a couple of the recent examples and then take you back, as the book does, to how this happened in our country. So 2009, if you thought Congress hasn't been able to do anything, they, but that's not true. Um, there's a, a few examples of, of good work. And one of those was 2009, when Congress uh, directed the FDA, enacted a public health law following the um, findings of a federal judge that the cigarette industry engaged in a racketeering conspiracy against the American people. That's not an allegation, that's a proven fact after trial upheld on appeal. Congress passed a law saying, FDA, come up with better warnings. We want warning labels on, on cigarette packages. We now know that they've engaged in child targeting trying to get an addictive, deadly substance uh, in, 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 uh, to children. We want big graphic warnings, FDA, go do it. That law doesn't exist anymore, it got struck down, uh, and that was upheld on appeal about two weeks ago, wiped off the books, violation of corporate speech, violation of the cigarette company's rights of speech to require those warning labels on cigarettes. Um, financial reform. Uh, SEC tried to get proxy rules to give more access, better, better director oversight of the, of, the, of the companies that dragged down and blew up the global economy. Struck down, violation of corporate speech. Uh, Dodd-Frank, we have about one-third at best implemented because of the corporate veto. Um, this is going on every day, every, every week, every month across America, lo local laws, state laws. So this didn't just happen. It's not because we have a problem in our First Amendment that created this corporate speech. It was a strategic, very well-funded game plan to transform the First Amendment. And here's how it happened. Earth Day, 1970, 20 million Americans in the streets. 20 million, I mean, imagine 20 million Americans coming out um, with a tightish slogan, 
Uh, and, and it worked. It worked. Congress, with a Republican president in the, in the White House, passed Clean Air Act, Clean Air Act, Endangered Species Act, created the EPA, first uh, mileage standards for cars ever, Toxic Substances Act, Eastern Mountain Wilderness Act. I could go on, I'd run out of hands. And within a couple of years, massive wave of reform in response to the demand of the American people for more balance in our life, that we weren't just going to be a disposal site for corporate America anymore. We got balance. It worked. Well, some of you may know Lewis Powell. The Powell Memo is a, is a document he wrote. He was a lawyer in Richmond, Virginia, on the board of the Philip Morris Cigarette Corporation, on the board of about a dozen other corporations. He looked at that display of democracy in action with some horror. And he wrote a memo to his client, the US Chamber of Commerce, um, which, which we could talk a lot about, but we don't have time for right now. But it's essentially, unlike your local chamber, a front group for very few global corporations to funnel money into our elections and corrupt our, our political process. Uh, he wrote a memo to the Chamber of Commerce uh, in 1970, after Earth Day, that said, essentially, corporations have been far too passive, and they had to take power use power unambiguously without embarrassment. These are his words. I quote the memo at some length in the book. Um, and the remarkable thing is, you see, well, he said we had to fund, corporate America had to fund a multi-year effort, as long as it took, work together, and that, it, these are his words, an activist-minded Supreme Court would be the best instrument for social, legal, and political change in America. And he meant activist-minded Supreme Court as an opportunity, not as a criticism. Uh, so what happened? It could just be the rantings of a, you know, a, a corporate lawyer frustrated with democracy in action, but no. He was appointed to the Supreme Court six months later. He, Justice Powell became, he became Justice Powell. The Chamber and their allies did as he suggested. Some of you may have heard of ALEC now. The American Legislative Exchange Council came out of this. The Washington Legal Foundation, New England Legal Foundation, Pacific Legal Foundation. Every region in the country has a corporate legal foundation whose job is to bring cases, file suit, and I talk about some of those early cases they waged in the 70s and 80s that created this corporate speech doctrine. And don't let anyone tell you Citizens United isn't about a corporate personhood or corporate power. They're filled with that metaphor. Corporations are people. Corporations are speakers. Corporation, corporate voices cannot be silenced. They read like some, you know, uh, you know, the briefs of some beleaguered minority fighting for rights. And, and if you took out corporations, it sounds, you know, it sounds pretty compelling. It worked. Lewis Powell wrote four decisions in six years, five to four decisions for the Supreme Court in response to these efforts created the idea of corporate speech. Never existed in American life for 200 years. The first case was in Massachusetts. It struck down a citizen referenda law that said we don't want corporate money in our citizen referendum in Massachusetts. Bank Boston, Gillette Digital Equipment Corporation did as Powell and the Chamber suggested, come together, fund litigation, struck it down. Didn't have a chance until it got to the Supreme Court. Lewis Powell wrote that decision, struck it down. He went on to write four more, as I said, created this notion, and Bill Rehnquist, Justice Rehnquist, the conservative, dissented in every one of those cases. So when you hear that there's an opportunity to reach conservatives on this issue, that we can come together to overturn Citizens United, it is true. A principled conservative argument is very strong uh, that this is, a, as Justice Rehnquist wrote many times, a danger to the republic, that, as he put it, uh, that uh, people owe their power to a sovereign higher than the state, uh, unlike a corporation, and that people have the power to keep corporations in the economic sphere so they don't leverage that power that we allow them to have, quite rightly in many instances, for economic policy reasons, but, but they're, that they're not permitted to leverage that into political power. He said he fought that fight, he wrote dissent after dissent, unfortunately they were dissents, it was five to four, and this notion of corporate rights got into our modern constitution. Um, so we know how it happened. We know how alien it is to American principles. Um, we know the danger to the American Republic. We know that we don't have a democracy if we don't, if we let this law stand. And when I say we, I mean we. We look at the polling, 80% uh, Republicans, Independents, Democrats support a constitutional amendment. 
to overturn Citizens United. So that's the solution we have. We know the problem, we know what we can do, and it is working. Uh, but let me just say a word about Montana, and then I'll close, because Montana really sums up, this is real, it's happening, and, and, and it's happening fast. So you may remember the Montana Supreme Court actually disagreed with the Citizens United Court. Uh, Steve Bullock, the Attorney General of Montana, went down to Washington after Citizens United was decided, and he testified uh, in the Senate Judiciary Committee. He said, you know, in Montana, we know corporate spending in elections destroys democracy. That's what we had in 1912, and the people of Montana, by referendum, banned corporate spending in elections. We've been doing this for 100 years, Citizens United could not possibly have meant that states are now unable to preserve democracy in their states when they know and have dem de evidence that co uh, corporate money will destroy it. He basically said, so sue me, and they did. He was sued uh, by a corporate front group, and it went up to the Montana Supreme Court. The Montana Supreme Court said, yes, the people of Montana do have this right. The Supreme Court of the United States said that it can't cause corruption to have corporate spending. We know it does, so we are facts. Citizens United might apply, uh, but not on our facts. Uh, Montana law stands up to the Supreme Court. They had a chance to fix Citizens United. So people say, you know, we don't need an amendment. The court's going to fix it. All we need is, you know, let the Supreme Court overturn Citizens United. It's only five to four. They'll fix it. They had a chance. You know, we filed an amicus brief uh, with, with many others, the American Sustainable Business Council and others. We, the Montana uh, Attorney General did a terrific brief. All kinds of allies came in to file the briefs to show the Supreme Court what was actually happening on the ground in America, not in this sort of fantasy that, if you read Citizens United, that, you know, this sort of a fantasy world where corporate money doesn't corrupt and corporations are people. They, we showed the court Democracy is dying out here, folks. Fix this. It, Justice Ginsburg, Justice Breyer said, yes, we should do this. We should take this case. Overturn Citizens United. Never happened. Summary reversal. It's same five to four lineup. Well, different, quite a little bit different because Justice Stevens, the great dissenter in Citizens United, is retired. Uh, but, but the lineup was the same. The same five justices. Uh, led by J Justice Roberts and, and Chief Justice Roberts and Justice Kennedy and Scalia and Thomas, um, said, no, Citizens United applies. Uh, Montana, don't try that again. Summary reversal. Didn't even give a chance for full briefing, full debate. Citizens United is the law of the land. We're not going to look at it again. So that leaves the amendment solution, folks. That's the only one we got. And the beauty of it is Montana didn't go home. <clears throat> Montana didn't say, well, okay, I guess we tried. Uh, Montana didn't say, you know, amendments are too hard. Or, you know, Montana didn't say corporate power is so strong. They got 45,000 signatures, thanks to Common Cause and allies out there. And Free Speech for People and, and, and Common Cause are, are part of bringing together Montanans, and a group called Stand with Montanans. So you can check it out at standwithmontanans.org. 45,000 signatures in about a month. It's on the ballot in November to say the state of Montana policy is that corporations are not people. Unlimited spending is, is uh, corrupting for democracy. We will have the power to limit unlimited spending in Montana. We instruct our delegation, our congressional delegation, to work for the constitutional amendment. So we're going to have a test of this. The people will have a chance to speak in Montana, and we're confident Republicans, Independents, and Democrats are going to come together to send, as Governor Schweitzer of Montana says, a prairie fire that will burn all the way to Washington to overturn Citizens United with a constitutional amendment. So I hope you'll join this work. It is historic. We have a huge opportunity. We are going to win, so let's work together, get it done, and thank you all. It's an American campaign. It's a campaign to um, protect, defend, once and for all, government of, for, and by the people. And that's all Americans. And if you 
you know, you look at the polling on this, uh, Republicans, Independents, Democrats are all opposed to corporate rule, which Citizens United, mm -hmm. uh, the Supreme Court case, essentially imposes on the country, and opposed to the domination of huge money in our elections, where, where uh, the people no longer get a say. And that's why Americans of all, all political viewpoints and other issues are coming together on this one. No, I think this, there is a role for everybody. Um, I mean, if your issue is the environment, if your issue is education, if your issue is foreign policy and military overstretch for the, for the country, if your issue is, are the issues of Occupy, if your issues are the issues of the Tea Party, yeah. we can't get there Interesting. without overturning Citizens United and getting back a republic of free and equal people. Then we can work on our real deep problems and we'll have good debates and we'll have disagreements, but we'll have a democracy again. So there's a role for Occupy, there's a role for every American in this fight. Well, I'd encourage people to uh, you know, join us at freespeechforpeople.org. We're here with Common Cause tonight uh, and, and move to amend and United for the People, People for the American Way, Public Citizen. There's so many great groups, I couldn't name them all. Yeah. So you can find one for you, and if you don't find one, make one in your neighborhood, your town. Join your neighbors, join this effort. It's historic, we're going to win, and we'll have a legacy for the next generation that we can be proud of. Do you, do you encourage people to get um, uh, kind of involved at the national level or more at the state and local? Every level. Okay. Uh, we need national, Very good. we need state, we need local, we need in your religious organizations, in your um, labor okay. union halls, and in your business organizations. Basically, wherever you are, talk to the folks there, see what they think, and then organize and join this work. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. We bet.